healing will be our subject from this morning on woes god's book bible is a book of healing gospel is a message of healing god wants to heal his people and that's why jesus came to this earth when jesus was on this earth his mission included healing in acts chapter 10 and verse number 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and with power who went about doing and healing all who were oppressed by the devil who went about doing good and healing healing all who were oppressed by the devil so sickness is caused by devil bondages are caused by devil business failures are caused by devil he is an oppressor but when jesus came he healed those people who were oppressed by the devil in matthew chapter 9 and verse number 35 Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people healing healing every sickness he can heal sickness he can heal physical sickness he can heal mental sickness He is our healer. Jesus Christ is our healer. When he was on this earth, he preached the kingdom of God. He taught about the kingdom of God. And he healed his people who trusted in God. Even in future eternity, in Revelation chapter 22 and verse number 2, we see... that was mentions about healing in the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore 12 fruits each tree yielding its fruit every month the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations for the healing of the nations here in this passage we see even after this world this term healing is relevant in what sense it is going to be relevant uh, that i don't know because in heaven there is no sickness there is no disorder there is no devil it's a totally healed place but we see here this verse speaks about healing Oh hallelujah praise the lord these days the lord is going to specifically teach us from the word of god about the importance of healing and especially i'm going to focus on inner healing healing of the soul when jesus works in our life he will heal our soul and you can grow to maturity where you will become more fruitful and productive in the kingdom of god when we discuss about the healing of our soul we need to know about the structure of man man and his inner structure bible says man is a trichotomy let's go to first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 23 Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ He who calls you is faithful who also will do it Here Paul says about the structure of man and he says here man is a trichotomy he has a spirit soul and body it is very specifically written here spirit human spirit human soul and human body spirit soul body man is not just his body he has a spirit 
and also he has a soul at the time of the creation of man if you go with me to genesis chapter 2 and verse number 7 and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground so the body of man is made of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life the breath of life it came from god ruha breath of life and that is the spirit of man and when this breath of life touched the body of man his soul was formed and man became a living soul his soul was formed or his soul was made at that moment so at the time of creation where is specific it is written here man is a trichotomy he has a spirit he has a soul and he has a body and most of the sicknesses on the body is rooted in the mind of man that's why the medical people call such sicknesses as psychosomatic sickness psychosomatic sickness soma is body in greek language and psycho suke is soul in greek language so most of the sicknesses on the body they say 85% of the sicknesses on the body are rooted in the soul of man rooted in the mind of man psycho somatic sicknesses that's why we need to know about the structure of man man is a trichotomy he has a spirit he has a soul he has a body at the time of the sacrifice of jesus christ on the cross of calvary if you go with me to luke chapter 23 and verse number 45 and 46 then the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two and when jesus had cried out with a loud voice he said father into your hands i commit my spirit you see him the body of jesus was hanging on the cross of calvary and now jesus says father into your hands i commit my spirit spirit his spirit he commit his spirit into the hands of his father and having said this he breathed his last his soul he he gave up his soul you see all these three spirit soul and body here on the cross of calvary very clear bible teaches us man is a trichotomy he has a spirit he has a soul and he has a body i am a spirit i have a soul i live in a body this is a simple definition of our inner structure man and his inner structure can be defined like this i am a spirit i have a soul i live in a body if you are a spirit then the possibility is so great as we know from genesis chapter 2 and was number 7 when god breathed into the nostrils of man man became a living soul and that breath of god is his spirit human spirit is made of the breath of god so in every man there is an influence of god god influence is present in every man the breath of god is the spirit of man so the possibility of a recreated spirit is so great when you accept jesus christ as your personal savior and lord the word of god will give a new life to your spirit because of the sin of adam the spirit of man went into a sleeping stage and when a person hears the word of god the word of god is spirit of god and life of god and the spirit of god will give life to that person's human spirit 
and that spirit become a new creation and that spirit becomes the residence of the holy spirit our spirit is the god aware part of us the part or place within us where god in the person of his spirit holy spirit can reside god's holy spirit therefore cannot influence us until the rebirth has taken place thereafter we can hear from god of ourselves speak to him and know him personally because our human spirit becomes the residence of the holy spirit and this human spirit have conscience intuition and communion the conscience is the discerning organ which distinguishes right and wrong so your conscience is in your spirit and the conscience can distinguish right and wrong intuition is the sensing organ of the human spirit communion is worshiping god our worship of god and god's communication with us are directly in the spirit so that is the importance of your spirit you are a spirit when you receive the revelation of your human spirit of your recreated human spirit it brings a great change and you will know the possibility of your spirit and you can live a supernatural life on this earth first corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 11 for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him the spirit of the man which is in him so the possibility of your human spirit is beyond your imagination we go to job chapter 32 and verse number 8 but there is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty gives him understanding there is a spirit in man and in ecclesiastics chapter 12 and verse number 7 then the dust will return to the earth as it was and the spirit will return to god who gave it speaking about human spirit man is a spirit the possibility of your human spirit which is recreated if you accepted jesus as your personal savior and lord then your spirit is a new creation and its possibility is great it carries the nature of god it carries the life of god because it became the residence of the holy spirit your spirit became the residence of the holy spirit and that spirit carries the life of god and it is justified that spirit is justified and also sanctified that means your spirit carries the natures of god it carries the light of god if you go with me to proverbs chapter 20 and was number 27 the spirit of a man is the lamp of the lord when adam was in the garden of eden he was a spirit man he was covered with the light of god covered with the glory of god that's why though he was naked there was no shame It is written here in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse number 27 the spirit of man is the lamp of the lord that means there is light in your spirit and that light is the glory of god when adam was in the garden of eden he lived a different life though he was able to eat fruits he was not hungry hunger and thirst was not known to him when he worked hard he felt no weakness no tiredness so the life of adam 
as a spirit man in the garden of eden was a different kind of life but because of the fall we became flesh we live in a body so the potential of our spirit is limited by our soul and our body on this earth we have to live such a life but one day when we leave this body when our spirit leave our body we will be able to experience the total potential of our spirit spirit soul body are divided by the word of god only the word of god can divide a person spirit soul body and that will help him to progress in his christian life the people outside the kingdom of god their spirit is not active they live according to the principles of the desires of their flesh the association of soul and body helps them to live on this earth but on the other hand when a person accept jesus as his personal savior his spirit becomes alive and that is the moment he has to allow the spirit to be his master and body has to become slave master a spirit soul becomes steward and body becomes the tool of the spirit whatever the spirit decides it will implement those decisions through the body so that was the original order in the garden of eden adam's spirit was his master and his soul was his steward and his body was his slave but this will happen only when the division of spirit soul body takes place and that will take place through the word of god go with me to hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12 for the word of god is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so it is written here the word of god is like a sword piercing even to the division of soul spirit and joints and marrow means body soul spirit body and this will happen only through the word of god so it is the responsibility of every christian to apply the word of god and allow the word of god to divide his spirit soul and body and then that will help him to grow to christian maturity spirit soul and body then he will know what is happening in the spirit and what is happening in the soul and how can he use his body the word of god will divide the spirit soul and body as the holy spirit is residing in our human spirit the person who accept jesus as his personal savior and lord his human spirit becomes the residence of the holy spirit and when the holy spirit resides in our human spirit our human spirit carries the life of god and that life of god is enough to heal our body in second corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 6 who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life in some translation the spirit here is small letter 
in uh, new king james and other translation it is capitalist it speaks about the holy spirit but in some other translation it is smallest that means human spirit both are right because when the human spirit becomes the residence of the holy spirit the holy spirit can give life from our human spirit to our body or in another way if we say as the holy spirit is in the human spirit the human spirit can give life to the body the human spirit carries god kind of life that is eternal life thus we receive eternal life through the word of god we received that life through the word of god because in uh, john chapter 6 and verse number 63 it says that the word of god is spirit and life what life god kind of life when we receive the word of god we receive god kind of life if your body becomes sick you can heal your body through the life of god which is in your human spirit romans chapter 8 and verse number 11 but if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you so generally people think that this speaks about the resurrection of the body not only that right now holy spirit can quicken our body because the holy spirit is right now in our human spirit and our human spirit carries god kind of life and through that god kind of life holy spirit can quicken our mortal body so if you sick on your body the remedy is in you the medicine is in you god's life is in you many times people are not aware about this truth christians are not aware about this truth that's why they are in panic and running here and there for healing no if you realize this truth there is healing in you because god kind of life is in your spirit when you become sick on your body your spirit will not become sick the fever in your body will not affect your spirit because your spirit carries eternal life and that eternal life is god kind of life and if you allow that god kind of life to travel from your spirit to your body it will and your body will be healed and the transporting vehicle is the confession of the word of god confess the word of god and you can take the life of god from your spirit to your body and your body will be healed in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 17 but he who is joined to the lord is one spirit with him is one spirit with him holy spirit resides in our human spirit and through the holy spirit we are joined with Lord Jesus Christ and about that it is explained here he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him the word of god is the spiritual food of our spirit like natural food is necessary for the health of our body likewise we need spiritual food for the health of our human spirit and the word of god is our spiritual food and through the word of god our human spirit receives spiritual strength and it becomes strong and bring our body and soul under its 
subjection human spirit will act as the master of our life bringing our body and soul under its subjection and for that purpose it needs the word of god when the human spirit receives the word of god through the holy spirit the spirit can receive the revelation of the word of god very important and once you receive the revelation of the word of god it will manifest it will manifest in your life the progression of the word of god when you read the word of god or when you study the word of god or when you hear the word of god you will be able to meditate the word of god and when a person meditate the word of god and that person receives a revelation of the word of god in his spirit and when the word is revealed then it will manifest you will be able to implement that word in your practical life where you will see miracles the manifestation of the revelation of the word of god as i told you yesterday that word is the transporting vehicle of the life of god from your spirit to the body so if you're sick on your body there is medicine in you where is that medicine in your spirit god kind of life is in your spirit through the holy spirit you are receiving god's nature in your spirit and there is god kind of life in your spirit and you can bring that life to your body by confessing the word of god the word of god is the transporting vehicle and once the life of god reaches your body you can receive healing if your body is sick you can receive healing that is the power of the word of god when the word and the holy spirit and your human spirit works together then you will see miracles everywhere in your body in your soul and in your practical life in your finances because you are not leading a natural life you are leading a supernatural life god kind of life on this earth and you can live in heaven on this earth and that is what is the meaning of this verse but he who is joined to the lord is one spirit with him oh yes hallelujah you think about that kind of life one spirit with him oh hallelujah praise the lord this morning let us revolutionize our life with the word of god and making our human spirit as the master of our life always led by the holy spirit bringing our body and soul under the subjection of our spirit and leading a successful life on this earth